She cannot believe it. Nor can we. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 most amazing come from behind wins at the Olympics. Arizioni has put the United States in the lead by four goals to three. For this list, we'll be looking at the times when Olympic underdogs pulled ahead against great odds or deficits to seal an unforgettable win. These victories may be surprising, inspiring, or even a little humorous, but they are all extraordinary. Which comeback story had you cheering in the locker room? Tell us in the comments. Number 10. Hermann Meyer rises from the crashes. How many lives does an Olympic skier have? Austrian alpine racer Hermann Meyer was full-on tiger blood winning the sport when he suffered a cranial crash during a race in the 1998 Winter Olympics. He shook that off and managed to win gold in the giant slalom and super-G disciplines just days later. In 2001, Meyer endured a devastating motorcycle crash, resulting in massive reconstruction surgery and the projected end of his career. While he did sit out the 2002 Salt Lake City Games, he would return to Olympic competition in the 2006 Turin Games. Although he didn't return to gold form, he did medal in both the Super G and Giant Slalom, earning silver and bronze respectively. Number 9. Esther Ledechka takes the Super G Prior to the 2018 Pyeongchang Games, Czech snowboarder and skier Esther Ledechka had never finished in the top three in an alpine competition. When she followed defending Olympic gold medalist Anna Veit in the Super G, nobody, least of all Ledechka, expected that she'd win. Anna Veit of Austria to the line, and she takes over the lead. Despite two significant errors during her run, the underdog finished a mere one hundredth of a second faster than Veit. And her reaction says it all. She's taking oh! gold! She is taking gold! Ledechka from the Czech Republic cannot believe it! She cannot believe it! Ledechka became the first woman to win gold in two disciplines in the same Winter Olympics, and she did so on skis borrowed from a fellow racer. They said it couldn't be done. She said it can. And you know what? She was right. The win was so unexpected that when asked why she had her goggles on during her press conference, she said, I don't have makeup. Number 8. Nigeria defeats Argentina in football. And the men's football final offered Nigeria the opportunity to become the first African nation ever to win a major international tournament. In the 1996 match for men's soccer gold, South American superpower Argentina held a commanding 2-1 lead over underdog Nigeria. He scored the second for Argentina who are back in front. The African nation had overcome underfunding and political unrest to make it this far, and they'd already surprised the world by beating gold favorite Brazil in the semifinals. With just 17 minutes left and Argentina ahead after a controversial penalty call, an electrifying shot by Daniel the Bull Amokachi tied the match. It's flicked on, and it might fall for Amokachi, and it has! And Daniel Amokachi with a brilliant improvised finish. As the final two minutes ran off the clock, Nigeria's go-ahead goal stood as the final point, and the Super Eagles stood victorious over two of the world's greatest football teams. There is the final whistle. There is a historic moment. Nigeria become the first African nation to claim gold in the men's football. The unexpected win boldly declared that the African athletes would not go quietly into the night. Number 7. Japan defeats the USA in softball. Softball's appearance in the Summer Olympics has been brief, featured only a handful of times since its debut in 1996. Softball was finally put on the calendar for the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta. Team USA owned the gold for the first three Olympic tournaments. In 2008, they were sailing with seven wins and a combined 53 runs and seemed utterly invincible. For Japan and for the gold, starting pitcher Yukiko Ueno took the mound against Kat Osterman and Monica Abbott. <laughs> ueno gave up only one run, while the Japanese offense took three from Osterman and Abbott, the latter of whom was fresh off five perfect innings. Ueno had achieved a perfect nine of her own in 2004, but her 413 pitches in Beijing ended the U.S. winning streak and made softball look like the great Japanese pastime. Number 6. Kerry Strug lands the second vault. 
Now here's a woman who took the immortal words of Chumbawamba a bit too literally. I get no doubt, but I get over again. Carrie Strug, a member of the 96 U.S. gymnastics team, was the last member to go in the vault competition against Russia. While the other women had struggled, Strug seemed to hammer in the final nail when she fell and injured her ankle. Determined to still clinch the gold, Strug limped to the runway for her second attempt. Incredibly, she landed on both feet, standing for only an instant before collapsing in pain. The U.S. had their first gold medal in the team all-around. The instant was enough, as her score secured the U.S. victory. Her coach would carry her to the podium in a historic and inspiring image worthy of a Disney movie. And one solidified in Olympic history. Number 5. Greg Louganis wins after a concussion. Considered one of the greatest divers in history, Greg Louganis was already a gold medal champion before the 1988 Seoul Olympics. In the three-meter preliminary rounds, Louganis' head collided with a springboard and he suffered a concussion. Watch his hips in relation to his heels. Right there, his weight is too far back. Consequently, the dive goes straight up. It does not move away. Greg knows he's close because of the way he comes out with his hands tucked in close. And he knows but he's there, in trouble right there. There, as you see, takes that glancing blow to his head. Just minutes after the stitches, the diver was on his feet and dove again, completing the preliminaries in third place. He would go on to ultimately earn the gold by a margin of 25 points. <laughs> Luganus later revealed that he had been diagnosed HIV positive just six months earlier. It seems like nothing would keep the great titleist from doing what he loved. He has since become a prominent advocate for LGBTQ rights and HIV awareness, continuing to inspire the world with his story. Olympic gold medalist Greg Louganis helped bring the conversation around HIV into the mainstream when he came out as an HIV-positive gay man back in the 1990s. Number four, Kipchoge Kano runs with gallstones. Most of us with gallstones wouldn't be able to move, let alone compete in several long-distance races. This wasn't a problem for runner Kipchoge Kano, who, at the 1968 Olympics, competed in two races before the 1,500-meter event. I was able to qualify for 1,500 meters, for 5,000 meters, for 10,000 meters. Arriving minutes before the start thanks to getting stuck in traffic, he ended up having to run to the stadium to make it on time. He was able to win gold over heavily favored runner Jim Ryan by 20 meters, the widest margin of victory for the event. He had already been disqualified from the 10,000 meter race for leaving the track after collapsing in pain with just two laps to go and won silver in the 5,000 meter race. 10,000 meters I collapsed because I had gold stone. And they told me I should not compete for any event. I had a lot of pain, but I told them, I came here as a captain of the Kenya team. I can't go home without no medal. Number three, Nancy Kerrigan's silver medal showcase. When truth becomes as dramatic as fiction, we get stories like Nancy Kerrigan. Prior to the 1994 Lillehammer Olympics, Kerrigan became a household name when she was attacked and injured after practice. Kerrigan was clubbed on the right knee with a baton by an unidentified man. Why? <laughs> the assault was later discovered to have been orchestrated by the ex-husband of rival skater Tanya Harding. Despite withdrawing from the U.S. championships, Kerrigan was named to the Olympic team at the insistence of rival skaters, and the world watched Nancy and Tanya square off. Harding broke down and placed eighth, while Kerrigan rose to deliver the skating performance of her lifetime. Though she controversially only took silver, Nancy Kerrigan's remarkable ascension over injury and scandal would be remembered long after, and dramatized in films like 2017's I, Tanya. Number 2. Stephen Bradbury and the Great Crash Stephen Bradbury's out-of-nowhere victories seemed bafflingly magical from start to finish. Astonishingly mismatched at the 2002 Salt Lake City Games, Bradbury only made the short track skating semifinals after the disqualification of defending champ Marc Gagnon. Then finished third in the quarterfinal. 
but got a lucky break when the second place finisher was disqualified for obstruction. Fast forward to the finals and the Australian trailed all front runners significantly up until the race's final seconds. Suddenly, a four-way collision caused all of the other skaters to flounder and allowed a visibly stunned Bradbury to coast across the finish line. Bradbury had previously passed the semifinals also because other competitors had crashed. It seemed like destiny and perhaps a bit of sneaky strategy propelled this Aussie to claiming the gold. I was having trouble uh, dealing with it the way that I won the race and you know, sure I won the gold medal but I wasn't the strongest skater out there and you know, I was... I would have liked to have been the guy who won the race because I was the strongest. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The Soviets' final seconds. A controversial clock reset changes the outcome. The Flying Housewife. Fanny Blankers Kuhn, mother of two, astonishes with four gold medals. The Dutch champion streaks away up the home stretch to win her third Olympic title in the excellent time of 24.4 seconds. Simon Hegstead Kruger gets back up. Kruger recovers from first lap fall to win gold. What a finish, what a race, what an effort from Simon Kruger. Charlotte Kala. On the final turn, Kala swerves from first to third. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Miracle on Ice. You believe in miracles? Yes! Unbelievable! Do you believe in miracles? Those everlasting words of commentator Al Michaels still echo to this day. It was 1980, and the Eagle and the Bear were pitted against each other in the rink. The Soviet four-time gold defender seemed titanic, stacked with professional athletes astoundingly more seasoned than the American amateurs. But coach Herb Brooks had recruited not the best players, but the right ones. I'm looking for the best players, Craig. I'm looking for the right ones. The Americans matched their adversary in physical prowess and team synchronization for three intense periods until the buzzer rang in an unheard of 4-3 U.S. victory. The upset is widely considered the greatest hockey story of the century and a message for all underdogs to never give up. The result would be known forever in America as the miracle on ice. Agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.